In our previous videos, we've learned a lot of techniques on how to find derivatives of a given function. Now we're going to be focusing on antiderivatives, so therefore we're going to reverse the process. So before, when we are given f of x and we want to find f prime of x, all we need to do is to find the derivative of the function. Now, in our lesson today, let's say I am given f prime of x and you want to find the original function, you will do your antiderivative, so you'll find f of x given f prime of x. And this is what antiderivative look like. Now, there's 101 reasons to smile about in antiderivatives, and it's going to start today. So, let's say in our derivatives, let's say, say you have x raised to n. To find the derivative of x raised to n, all you need to do is to add 1 in your exponent and bring down your exponent as your denominator and add a constant c in your antiderivative. So in general form, the basic um, antiderivative rule will be illustrated by this formula. So therefore, let's say you have x cubed and you want to find the antiderivative of x cubed. So using the formula, you add 1 to your exponent so it becomes x to the fourth and you bring down 4 in your denominator and add another constant. Now, if you're not convinced about the antiderivative, if you perform a derivative from this particular function, we know that a constant or any constant in derivative will turn into a zero. And for this term right here, to find its derivative, you bring down the exponent and you minus 1 in your exponent, so this becomes 3. So 4 over 4, x raised to 3. Cancel the 4, and you'll end up with your derivative function. And that's how antiderivative works in calculus. Now, let's have more examples on how we perform antiderivatives in given functions. So in our example, let's find the antiderivative of the given functions. So for number 1, we have y prime equal to 3x to the 4th minus 2x. And applying the rule, add 1 to your exponent and bring down your new exponent and you'll have 3x to the 4 plus 1 all over 4 plus 1 minus add 1 to your exponent in your second term and you'll have 2x raised to the 1 plus 1 all over 1 plus 1 which gives you 3 to the x or 3x raised to the fifth power all over 5 minus 2x squared all over 2. Now simplifying your function y from y prime is equal to 3 over 5x to the fifth minus x squared plus a constant. So don't forget your constant here because this is a very important part of your function. Now for number two, you have y prime is equal to 3x squared all over x. Now don't get confused about um, the quotient rule because in antiderivative, the quotient rule is not really going to work. So here, to be able to find the antiderivative, of this function, you need to simplify your rational e expression. So 3x squared all over x, you can cancel the x at the bottom, so you'll have y prime is equal to 3x. Now that your expression is in simplest form, you can find the antiderivative using the rule that we did on number 1. So add 1 to your exponent and bring it down, so you have 3x squared all over 2, which gives you 3 over 2x squared plus a constant. And that's how we perform antiderivative in some given function. Now let's take a part of, let's take a more complex uh, functions and uh, use the antiderivative rules in our problem. Now for this example, we are given the second derivative. So the second derivative or f double prime of x is 24x squared plus 2x plus 10, and f of 1 is equal to 5 and f prime of 1 is equal to negative 3. Our goal is to find the original function f of x. So since we are given the second derivative, we need to perform two antiderivatives to be able to reach f of x. So let's use the first step in finding f prime of x. So we are given f double prime of x. f prime of x is the antiderivative derivative of this function. So you have two, 24x cubed all over 3, plus the antiderivative of 2x, which is 2x squared all over 2, antiderivative of 10, which is 10x, and your constant that cannot be uh, forgotten in your f prime of x. So make sure you always write your constant at the end of your 
function when you're performing antiderivative. Now, we are given f prime of 1, which is equal to negative 3, and we will use this in our problem to be able to reach to our goal of f of x. So f prime of x is equal to 8x cubed plus x squared plus 10x plus c. f prime of 1 is equal to substitute the value of 1 to your x's, and you'll have 8 times 1 cubed plus 1 squared plus 10 times 1 plus c. And we know that f prime of 1 is equal to negative 3, so we can change f prime of 1 into negative 3 and solve for c, or the constant c. So c, by solving the equation, is equal to negative 22. So we will use this in our step number 2 to be able to find f of x. Now for second step, we know that f prime of x, or the first derivative by using the antiderivative, is 8x cubed plus x squared plus 10x plus c. But now that we know what c is, We'll not use C anymore. Now it's negative 22. Now we'll perform the antiderivative so we can find f of x. So f of x equal to the antiderivative of 8x cubed is 8x to the fourth all over 4. Antiderivative of x squared is x cubed all over 3. Antiderivative of 10x is 10x squared all over 2. And 22 is minus 22x plus the new constant, which is plus d. Now you can use any letters that you wish. You can use a, b, or you can use c again in this matter as long as you know that you have a constant at the end of your function. So to find this missing constant given f of 1 is equal to 5, we'll find f of 1 and simplify the function by plugging in the value of 1 to your x's. So you have 2 1 to the fourth plus 1 cubed all over 3 plus 5 1 squared minus 22 times 1 which gives you 2 plus 1 third plus 5 minus 22 plus d equal to 5 because f of 1 is equal to 5. Now by solving your equation, d is equal to 59 over 3. So by finding the value of your last constant, which is 59 over 3, we'll be able to find f of x. So f of x is therefore 2x to the fourth plus x cubed all over 3 plus 5x squared minus 22x plus d, which is 59, all over 3.